Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look and some setup tips for this thing here. Now this is the new co-pilot flight controller or stabilizer. It's kind of something that kind of is more than a stabilizer but not quite a full flight controller that you can put inside a fixed wing model. Now I have been lucky enough to have one here for over three weeks and been flying it regularly as part of some beta testing. So I wanted to give you kind of the benefit of my experience rather than being a reviewer that just got it in the post yesterday and wants to talk about it. Now this is aimed at those fixed wing pilots who find the idea of installing something like iNav Flight or Arduplane or one of those other things and I've got loads of video series on that so do check them out if you're interested but for lots of pilots that's just too darn complicated whereas the idea of installing a simple stabilizer to help with uncommanded movement and to calm down a plane and make it easier to fly is something they feel that they can do. Now this is absolutely a, one of those kind of stabilizers. So I've done lots of videos on stabilizers too, and this does exactly the same thing, but it has a little bit of a special thing up its sleeve. This one has a GPS unit and it can provide two functions. It can either do a GPS return to home or you can set it up to have a GPS fence so that in the event that it flies too far away from you, it'll automatically turn around and come back. Now, this isn't going to potentially save your model every time, and I don't think you should rely on it to bring your model back if something nasty happens. But in the testing that I've been doing here, I've been really impressed with how it performs. The setup is an awful lot easier than a full flight controller. It is literally plug and play. And there's only three little rotating pots and a little button that you need to play with to get it set up and everything else is already taken care of. Now this thing supports most of the common configurations that you're going to come across. A traditional plane setup with a conventional elevator and rudder, a V-tail or a flying wing. But there are a couple of things that you need to do in order to set it up and get it working. The other cool thing about this is that it is relatively inexpensive. It is cheaper than a lot of the other stabilizer boards and controllers that I have looked at on the channel. So you're getting an awful lot more. Not only the stabilization that you get for this, although you don't have things like prop hang mode and stuff that some of the other stabilizers do, it provides a really solid stabilization as well as giving you that return to home oh dear switch if something nasty happens. And even if you're an experienced pilot, that can be a handy thing to have in a model because it means that if something does happen with the radio, the link or the SBUS connection to the ZOHD co-pilot inside, then the co-pilot is going to fly it back to you. Similarly, if you're learning to fly, then stabilizers can be a useful thing. If it's a smaller model and you're flying in wind, it can take away some of that uncommanded movement. But it's also that peace of mind that if you're flying line of sight or FPV, you can flick a switch and have the model come back to you. I found it particularly useful uh, when I've been flying in areas that I'm not as familiar with as my regular flying spots. And when I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I'm stood in the field, popping it into return to home is great because it kind of swings and points directly back at where I'm stood. So even for FPV, it can come in very handy too. Now, there is a manual that comes in the box, as you've seen. So let me go through the steps that I've gone through to set it up. Uh, the manual, I think, could be a little bit clearer in terms of the steps that you follow. So let me go through exactly what I've done. So first of all, you need to remove all the mixing on your radio. If you've already flown the model and have an Elevon mix for a wing or something like a VTEL mix, remove all of those mixes and have the channel order set as I'm showing here. The channel order on the outputs needs to be aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, and then a mode switch. You need a three position mode switch. That's going to allow you to switch between the three modes, which are going to be stabilized mode, manual mode and either return to home or fence depending on how you've got it set. Before you can configure anything you do need to plug the whole system together. I struggled with this initially because I like to set up things on the bench but this is one of those systems that actually seems to go together better if you have it installed in the model. Plug the servos into the outputs as per the diagram in the manual. So all of those are labeled, just plug them into the little three pin servo plugs that are part of the ZOHD co-pilot and plug your S bus input from your receiver into the S bus in. Also connect your GPS and also connect the configuration board as well. 
Now I would make sure that whenever you're doing this stuff on a bench, remove the prop from your model and power the system. I initially used a 5 volt BEC plugged into one of the spare outputs to power everything, um, but you don't need to do that. You can just plug the mains in from the battery and it'll power the system. Now in order for everything to work, the GPS light needs to go solid. When it initially starts, the little red light on it will flash, and that just means that it's receiving information from the GPS, but wait until it goes solid. You'll also hear some additional tones from the motor as the system tells you it's ready to go. Now the next thing you need to do is move the mode switch until you enter stabilize mode. And what you're looking for is a flashing green light on top of the co-pilot. But you can only change the plane type in the co-pilot when you're in stabilized mode. So while the light is flashing and you're in stabilized mode, I would just press the button on the setup board for, I count to two, let go, and then it will cycle through each of the settings for a regular plane, a VTL plane, and a wing. And wiggle the controls on your radio until you get the right one. Once that's done, then go back into manual mode, and that should be the middle channel position, in your radio configuration, you do the regular stuff on each of those channels, aileron, elevator, and rudder, to make sure the direction is the right way. Reverse them in the radio, set the weights that you need to give you the desired amount of movement in manual mode. Once you've done that, then pop it in back into stabilized mode and rock the model around. You might find that, that the correction that the ZOHD co-pilot is using is actually in the wrong direction. That's not a problem. Just get hold of the little screwdriver that's provided as part of the kit, pop it into the potentiometer for the control that's backwards and move it in the other direction. At the 12 o'clock mid position, that's no gain. Turning it Anti-clockwise will give you correction in one direction, and the more clockwise you turn it, the more gain you have. And similarly, the other direction, when you turn it clockwise from the middle position, will give you correction in the other direction. Now, for this little mini talon that I've been testing here, this is the position that I've used for both, and it's worked really well. I'd recommend starting roughly around here, uh, and if you find that when you fly it's excessively waggling or it doesn't feel locked in enough, you can just increase the gain, just turn it in whichever direction makes the control surfaces move in the right way. That's all the really hard stuff done, so not difficult at all. Uh, the last thing to do is set up the return to home fence mode using the third pot. If it's turned all the way clockwise to its limit, that's going to be return to home, and anywhere apart from there is going to be fence mode. Now, return to home is going to do exactly what you'd expect. I'll show you some flying footage in a minute. And the fence mode can be set between anywhere between 100 and 300. 100 meters being maximum anti-clockwise turn of the potentiometer and 300 being the limit in the other direction just before you're going to turn it into return to home mode. Last couple of things you need to do is perform a level calibration. I'd recommend putting something under the nose to lift the nose slightly. Most models will need a slightly up attitude to maintain level flight at cruise throttle. And then while it's like that, as shown in the manual, put the sticks into the low both low position, push them into the middle of the radio and hold it like that until the level calibration is complete. And the last one to do is a radio calibration. Uh, because you may have moved trims around and other pieces in manual mode to get it perfect, then what you need to do is with the radio set as per the manual, long press the set button that we've used to change the model type, press it for more than three seconds. It will store the middle channel positions as the neutral position and the aileron will wiggle a couple of times to let you know that that's successful. That will need to be done after the flight if you fly it in manual mode and trim it using the radio that's going to move those middle neutral positions you'll have to re-perform the radio calibration to have that set. So what's it like to fly? Well really uneventful. Popping it into stabilized mode works really well and works very similarly to the other stabilizers that I've played with in other ZOHD models where they come pre-installed. The ZOHD stabilizer, particularly the most recent one in the ZOHD orbit, is a very capable one and inspires a lot of confidence. And this seems to work in exactly the same way. It limits pitch and roll, it helps you control the plane and removes uncommanded movement to make it a very, very easy model to fly. And also in a little bit of windy conditions, it just carries on. 
So for return to home, all of the return to home settings are set and cannot be changed. And this is one of the cool things if you're not uh, into plugging USB cables in. The return to home radius is about 50 to 70 meters. The altitude is about 70 meters uh, from the testing here. Now that should be enough to clear almost all the obstacles around. If the plane is above that level, it will gently sink to that altitude, return to the home position and then circle. Uh, or the cool thing is, is if you accidentally get below that kind of roughly 70 meters height, it will apply more power, pull the nose up and rise to that height on its way back to you. So in summary, what do I think? Well, after playing with this for almost a month now, I'm very impressed that this is almost plug and play. So if you don't like the idea of messing around with flight controllers and flashing firmware and all of that gubbins, this is a great alternative. The stabilizer works really nicely and the return to home works really well too. I know a couple of my friends are going to be very interested in this product because of the peace of mind of having that return to home mode. So if something horrible happens, they do have that oh dear switch. I like the way it supports most of the standard setups here with TV and wing style setups and the way that the gain and all of the settings are set are quite intuitive once you've done it once or twice with those little rotating pots. The mixing board that sets everything up can be unplugged once you've got everything set. You don't need to leave it plugged in and that's handy if you're really tight for space or you want a super light build. Uh, myself, I've kept it installed so that I can play around with the settings as part of my testing here. The last thing I really like about this is when you plug it in, it will initially just sit there and beep until it gets a 3D lock. And that 3D lock is considered the home location. So make sure that you're plugging it in where you want that home location to be stored. Once it's stored, then there's a triple beep and you can hear the motor initialize and you're ready to go. I like the way that that little kind of safety feature is in there so that you can't accidentally get a bit carried away and launch it with, uh, without the GPS home location stored successfully because that would make the return to home or the fence mode work unreliably. A couple of things to be aware of though that caught me out. Uh, the plane type is only set up when you have the stabilized mode selected. So you can't set it up without a receiver plugged in and all of those configurations set, which is why I say put it all together first and kind of work it out in the plane. There isn't an on-screen display as part of this, so it's perfect for line of sight flyers, but also for FPV2. There's another product from ZOHD, a little thing called the VC400. Uh, you see some of the footage here. It's a very small camera capable of up to 400 milliwatts of transmitting power, uh, plugs into the JST lead that you find in lots of planes these days. And that gives you your battery voltage. It gives you the time you're in the air. It also allows you to see exactly what channel and power setting you have set to. Don't forget, you're going to have to remove all of the mixing in the radio. All of the mixing is done by the co-pilot. So again, if you're using a model that you have flown before, you're going to have to just remove all that mixing and get it set up to the same way that I've shown in the video for everything to work properly. The GPS return to home height and circle radius is fixed, so you can't change that. So if you're going to be flying in an area where there's going to be obstacles significantly higher than the kind of 70 80 meters height that it tries to RTH at, then be aware of that. You could potentially have the plane fly into one of those obstacles on its way back to you. And the last thing is the manual isn't great, which is why I've kind of made the video. And just to reiterate, the to set the fence mode, uh, the 100 meter range is at the position one in the manual and the 300 meter fence position is at the position two of that particular pot in the manual as well. So hopefully that's interesting for those of you that are fixed wing flyers that would love to have something like stabilization and a GPS return to home and a GPS return to home oh dear switch but just find the whole idea of flight control is overwhelming. There's now an alternative and not expensive alternative either. So I'll be getting a few of these for a couple of friends of mine and popping them in so that they have a little bit more confidence when they're out to fly. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video and particularly for watching right to the very end. We try and release a video on Tuesday and Friday and sometimes we'll release one or two extra ones in a week as well. All of the videos on the channel are organized into easy to use playlists. So do have a look in there because if you're interested in a subject, we organize all the videos on that subject so you can find them easily all together in one place. If you like what we're doing, then please like and subscribe and tell others about the channel so they can come and join as well. 
We're available in all of the usual social media places, particularly in places like Instagram, Twitter, and we also share all of our 3D designs on Thingiverse.